The Supreme Court is set today to make one of the biggest decisions ever and guys it involves none other than student loans now with this decision a lot a lot will happen right the markets markets will probably either rally to the moon or to the moon right one of those decisions mainly because well when it comes to student loans understand that uh you know if the supreme court comes out saying hey you know what no you people have to pay this back and there is no forgiveness at all that's going to be another massive massive payment onto them onto just people in general that will stop them from you know paying mortgages from paying their car from paying well from investing in general so that's going to play a massive massive role into how the markets actually move and so far what we're seeing is markets are rallying at around 0.7 percent on the s p futures and 0.42 percent on the dow futures so right now things are looking very very optimistic when it comes to this decision i believe that this is what, why that this is happening but nonetheless, when the decision comes out, probably by the time this video comes out, it'll already be out. But when that decision comes out, we're either going to see a massive, massive rise or a massive, massive fall. And on top of that, guys, remember, depending on what they do, if they do decide to make student loans actually, you know, not forgiven, well, guess what? Unfortunately, we're also dealing with, and I've shown this before here on the channel, we're also dealing with US credit card debt nears a trillion dollars. So as student loans, credit card debt nearing a trillion dollars for consumers, yeah, you have a recipe for disaster. So that's what we're gonna talk about today, guys. It is 9 a.m. as if I'm recording this. And as I as I said, you know, I'm not going to work this week. So yeah, um, it actually starts Friday. So Let's cover this, guys. Let's cover this news, and then let's cover one of your recommendations. But before we get started, let me just remind everybody to like, subscribe, comment. It really does help here with the algorithm on YouTube. Y'all can follow us on the new tech sites. Link is in the description below. So let's actually read the news. We got Supreme Court decision on student loan forgiveness expected Friday. Within 24 hours, I think this was written on the 29th. Uh, within 24 hours, student loan borrowers are likely to learn the fate of the Biden administration debt forgiveness plan. The Supreme Court is expected to issue its decision Friday, which could be the last day of its term before it breaks for summer recess. Now, what are what's going actually going to happen with this? We got Supreme Court's terms is almost over and the justice is still haven't issued the decision on President Joe Biden's plan to cancel up to $20,000, $20,000 for tens of millions of Americans. But the ruling is almost certain to come out Friday, experts say. If we come down over here, we can see uh, what is at stake in the loan forgiveness decision. The justice's ruling will determine whether the Biden administration can move forward with his plan to wipe out more than a quarter of the country's $1.7 trillion in outstanding federal student loan debt debt. Roughly 14 million people would have their student loan entirely cleared by the program according to an estimate by higher education expert Mark Kantrowitz. In total, around 37 million people would be eligible for some loan cancellation. Up to $20,000 if they receive a Pell Grant in college, a type of aid for low-income families, or as much as $10,000 if they did not. Shortly after Biden announced his plans, the legal challenge is piled up. The program has now faced at least six lawsuits from Republican-backed states and conservative groups, most of which accused the president of executive overreach. Two of those legal challenges made it to the Supreme Court, one brought by GOP-led state Arkansas, Iowa, Kansas, Missouri, Nebraska, and South Carolina, another backed by Job Creators Network Foundation, a conservative advocacy organization. All right, guys, now, whichever way you side on this, that's not really the point. The point is, is that if the Supreme Court actually does say, no, uh, you can't do that because it violates this and this and this, well, markets are probably going to just collapse. Right, markets are probably going to just collapse. And as you can see right over here, well, we're already up to 1% in pre-market. Now, I don't know why this has jumped. Um, probably Seeking Alpha will tell me if the uh, if the Supreme Court actually did decides anything. But right now, I don't think they've they mentioned anything. This will be very, very big news. So markets right now are rallying. We're going to the moon as it currently stands. But it is what it is. Now, if the Supreme Court, as I just said, say, hey, uh, no, 
no, you can't forgive people's uh, student loans, that's going to make the markets collapse. Because, as I said, people will no longer have the money now to invest, right? The, the extra, I don't know how much, I don't have any student loans, but I don't know how much extra a month you have to pay. Let's just say the equivalent of a car, right? Let's just say $500 extra a month. So that is $500 that you no longer have to invest, right? That is now $500 that you may not be able to, you know, maybe you were using that $500 to, I don't know, pay your mortgage. That, or like to help pay your mortgage. You can't do that anymore. Um, but the money's gonna be a lot tighter. Uh, it, what happens if you have a car? Well, you can't pay that either because you no longer have the $500 that was paying. So it's going to cause a lot, a lot of turmoil. And on top of that, well, remember that the Americans are not really in the best spot when it comes into just debt in general. As I showed in the beginning of the video, as well as other times here on the channel, guys, US credit card debt is up to almost a trillion dollars. Now, this one is a fairly old, old-ish kind of article, June 12, 2023. But it still is relevant. You know, this kind of debt when it comes to credit card isn't going to go out of the picture, right? It's not going to go out of the picture in the span of just 15 days. So guess what? US credit card debt reaches a record $988 billion driven by high inflation and increased non-discretionary spending on cards. Basically, what this is saying is that because of the inflation rates, people is people have been taking out credit cards to pay for groceries all right we're not talking about getting credit cards out to pay for like like some extravagant thing we're we're talking about them getting credit cards to buy eggs which is a problem which is a major major problem so yeah combine a trillion dollars with credit card debt which by the way highest interest right i think it's up to like 20 to 25 percent in interest when it comes to credit card debt depending on obviously like the terms but that is that is insane so credit card debt 20 percent now and on top of that paying student loans back which for the likelihood of what three years you didn't have to do yeah that's 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 bad guys that's bad also on top of that remember housing prices were skyrocketing and even to date when when those interest rates fall just a tiny tiny amount people still buy houses how are they buying those houses probably on a massive massive loan that right now they're going to be squeezed out even more to pay for so get ready because if this thing if the supreme court actually does come out saying yeah uh no no absolutely not you cannot you cannot do this it will be absolute turmoil so those are just the news for today we're still in pre-market it is 9 10 a.m and let's actually spin the wheel guys to see what company we should analyze we're gonna do a very very qu quick analysis nothing you know too major just, you know let's just do an analysis on the company company guys bkkt now bkkt was brought up by none other than aleman jolie 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 i'm gonna go with jolie um all right so let's take a look at this company here is the comment where he pretty much recommended this and let's see if this company guys is decent at the current share price and of course let's take a look at their fundamentals as well all right, everybody. So here we have the company backed holdings. Now, I have no idea what this company is. I already took a look at the fundamentals, obviously, and uh, ooh, ooh, it is not looking too hot. But let's actually take a look at this company. We got backed holdings from crypto. Oh, boy. From crypto trading payments to millions of options for loyalty redemption, we work with our partners to deliver better experiences for today. Okay, that explains the fundamentals. That explains the fundamentals a lot. So, yeah, I'm probably going to get a lot of heat for this one because, no, well, apparently I don't understand crypto, even though I own crypto. And, uh, you know, I did do my fair share of um, staking back in the day, but um, apparently I don't understand crypto. Now, this company, I'm going to tell you all right now, the fundamentals aren't looking too hot. So I'm going to dig them a whole lot. But if that bothers you. And if that bothers you because, you know, it's, you're missing up on the thing on the, you know, guys, whatever. I mean, the, the same thing happens with Clean Spark. 
Guys, at the end of the day, if this is a company, I'm going to take a look. If this is a company, right, in the stock market, in the U.S. stock market, I'm going to take a look at this and analyze it from the exact same lens as all other companies. So just fully understand that. Coming over here into the company profile, we got Backed Holdings Inc. offers a platform for crypto and redeeming loyalty points. The company institutional grade technology platform offers various solutions such as custody, an institutional grade custody solution for market participants, Crypto Connect. A platform that enables consumers, businesses, institutions to buy, sell, and store crypto in digital experience. Crypto rewards that focuses on enabling customers to learn crypto rewards, as well as redeem existing reward currencies into crypto. So they're mainly into crypto, guys. I mean, they were just established in 2018, and uh, they only have around a thousand employees. Now, uh, if we take a look at their earnings, which was released on May 11th, EPS Gap. EPS normalized actual came in at 73 cents, beat by 88 cents. There is no gap actual, and the revenue came in at 13 million dollars, which was a miss by 1.47 million dollars. Now coming in here into the calculator, we got the ticker for BKKT, market cap of 327.21 million dollars, a PE of NA. Yeah, um, they're they're the negatives, guys, right? Their net income is in the negative, so that's a major major problem. Current share price. Of a dollar twenty, that's another major red flag. A penny stock, right? Anything under five dollars is technically a penny stock. That is, that's a major, major red flag right there. You know, I don't like penny stocks because they're way too volatile and way too just gambly, right? I do not like to gamble. I like to be certain when I make investments. So, taking a look at this graph on the one year, we can see that they are down forty-four percent year to date. They're up three and a half percent, but you can see that from the likelihood of like March, they have just been very, very flat. Now, they are in the financial sector, right? They are in the financial sector. They are a little bit more, I would think that they're insulated from the whole banking thing. But guys, company, okay, any company, right? If you're in the stock market, you are subjected to the stresses of the banks. End of story, right? Because when they take out loans, when they take all that stuff, they take it out through a bank, right? They take it out through a bank. Sure, they may do crypto. They may do all this other stuff. But at the end of the day, they will always have to go through a bank. So, yeah. Now, 52 week range, it is $1.08, which is really, really low. And the 52 week high is $3.79. Okay. So, I want to take a look at this in the five year because I want to see. Look at this thing. Wow. Talk about. Whoa, guys. Look at that. Reach the peak. On October 29th, 2021, during the hype, this was a hype one. This was a hype stock. Look at this. $42.52. Guys, at that point, look at that spike. Just look at that instant spike. At that point, were some of you thinking, to the moon? Yeah, we reached the moon, all right. The other moon, the one all the way at the bottom, right? Look at this. That's a massive, massive drop, and it has not recovered. Once again, you can 100% overpay for growth. And this was in 2021. They did not have five years of data, right? I'm actually using for my calculator for the for the all the fundamentals. I'm actually using a, the trailing 12 months as like the most nearest one because we don't have all data points that I normally like to use. Very very new company in 2021. This was also very very new. So I'm looking at this. I'm just like major major red flag, right? Negative net income, a penny stock, and that hype. Oh no no no, no. absolutely no. So. Let's come back into the calculator. They do not pay out a dividend, thank God. And uh, here's where we got their free cash flow, guys. Uh, Five-year average, negative 114 million. And the last year's free cash flow, negative 163 million. Decreasing a lot by a lot. So now let's do a quick look into their fundamentals. We got the net income, negative $33 million five years ago to negative $585 million. That is a decrease of 1,673%. Consistently decreasing, I'm giving this a 0%. Looking now into the free cash flow, we got five years ago of negative $57.7 million to one year ago of negative $163 million. This is a decrease of 182% with an average of negative $114.02 million. We get a few increases here and there. You can see from five to four and then from three to two, but overall it is going down. I'm gonna give this guys a 5%. Looking now into the revenue. 
it's looking decent. However, you guys can see that massive, massive spike going from negative 0.9 million dollars to a positive 55 million dollars as of today. I know this has one year, but understand that this is the trailing 12. So this is this is technically today. This is an increase. Look at that increase: 6,211 percent. Wow, guys, absolutely wow. I'm actually going to give this a 40%, mainly because, well, you can see that from four, three, two, and one year ago, it's at least increasing it. So I'm going to make it a 40%. Looking now into the assets minus the liabilities. Massive, massive spike two years ago. That's kind of understandable, right? 2021, that massive spike happened. That's when you saw the, the massive rise in their stock price. And then it came crashing back down to earth. Average total assets, it is 785.84 million. Average liabilities is 92.16 million. Doing this difference, we get 700, or at least almost $700 million. I'm going to give this guys a 5%. Looking into the cash flow minus the liabilities. This one's looking really, really awful, guys. Um, I mean, pretty consistently going down, all except for one year. And that was four years ago. Again, it's not really four years ago. Just keep that in mind. The numbers are messed up because they don't have all the data points. But nonetheless, as of one year or as of the trailing 12 months, guys, 282, negative 282 million dollars. That is a lot lower than the average of negative 188.4 million dollars they had one year where they increased this and i put this as a zero percent though i'm actually going to give this guys a five percent i'm increasing a little bit just because of that five to four years ago and when it comes into the shares outstanding i have no idea what's happening here i have no, look at that share look at the share outstanding buyback wow we got five years ago of 582.5 million shares outstanding to today of 82.6 shares outstanding. 82.6 million sh shares outstanding. Sorry. Guys, that is a buyback. 85%. That's a major red flag for me. Especially after three. That's a major, major red flag for me. Actually, guys, from two years ago to what to, to essentially today, they are issuing shares. Right, they're issuing shares going from 57.2 million to 82.6. So I'm looking at this, I'm just like, this is all over the place. I, I, I don't understand it. They're clearly, sure, they bought back at a massive rate. One, like, as of, as of from three years ago to two years ago. But that, it's still, they're still issuing shares. So I'm going to give this, believe it or not, I'm actually going to give this a 0% because I have no idea where this is going. That is a massive outlier of buyback. I don't know why they bought back that much. Probably because I had a lot of money. Um, obviously after the rise, but that's still a major outlier and I don't like that. And from two years ago to today, well, you can see that they are issuing shares at 2.1%. So I'm going to have to give that a 0% because I, I, I really don't understand it. I really, really don't. And when it comes to the cash and coolants, they currently hold $580 million with an average of $138.5 million. Overall grades, I mean, this thing got two zeros, right? Net income, 0%, free cash flow, 5, revenue, 40, assets minus liabilities, we got 5, cash flow minus liabilities, 5, and shares of setting up 0, overall grade of 10%, guys. It's not a company, it's just, it's not a company that you would put, my, just by, honestly, just by the net income free cash flow alone, I would just be like, no, it's too speculative, right? Can this thing go up to what it was, like $30 in 2021, October 29, 2021? Sure, it absolutely can, but that's gambling. Like people, it, it went up that high. People thought, oh my God, it's going to go to the moon. And then it just doof, came crashing back down. So I don't want to lose money. And that, and this right here is a perfect way to lose money. So whatever your opinion may be of this company, tell me I'm wrong. Okay, that's fine. You know, it's not like I haven't done my fair share of, of crypto trading. In fact, I even hold some Bitcoin. I don't make it my primary investment because it's way too speculative. But at the end of the day, guys, I do know what I'm talking about. When it comes to these type of companies, sure, do they have a future? Yeah, but you can see now that at least two years ago, it was what? Crypto, crypto, crypto. Now it's what? AI, AI, AI. The hype switches. The hype switches and it switches on a dime. So it is what it is, man. I personally do not like this company. And when it comes to what price we should pay, well, um, not putting anything, we can see that this thing should be worth $4.67 and adjusting for debt, almost $10. Now you look at this and you're like, Oh my God, but when you just said you don't like it. Well, understand that the price that you should pay and the fundamentals is two completely di different things, right? Two completely di different things. The fundamentals drive my decision, not necessarily this. If the fundamentals hit every single mark or at least most marks that I like uh, and this uh, doesn't, then I still would be willing to buy the company just based on the price I get. But if the fundamentals don't, don't follow what I like, I don't care if this is like 
super valuable, right? I don't care if, if this is like uh, telling me that it should be worth a thousand dollars and it's worth a dollar. No, no, I, I don't care. If the fundamentals don't, don't drive me, I'm not doing it. And this is an example of that. So we could input any of these numbers. The problem with this is I have no idea where the shares of standing are going, right? They're clearly issuing, but to what extent are they going to issue? We can see that they have been issuing around 2%, but who knows, right? They could have a massive spike in any one of these days. And that's a, something I like to see. Now, we can input some numbers, but I don't really think that's going to be that valuable. And here's the reason why. If we come over here to Seeking Alpha, we can see that the forward is estimated at almost 40%, guys. 40%. That revenue has been increasing a lot. Don't get me wrong. But every other kind of metric is bad into the negatives. I mean, we can actually put these numbers and entertain this. I'm not going to put 40% though. Let's say at around, for the low assumption, let's say 5% for the median. Let's say at around 6%. And then for the high assumption, let's say around 7%. Now, for the predicted share buyback, they've been issuing, right? They've been issuing in the past five. And I think that they will issue. I think they're going to have a massive spike one of these years. Uh, in fact, I think that that's most likely the likelihood of the thing that's going to happen. So for the lowest assumption, let's say negative 20. For the median assumption, let's say negative 18. And for the high assumption, let's say negative 16. The negative just means that they're going to issue. And with this, guys, we get $4.59 to $5.10. And adjusting for debt, $9.68 to $10.73. Margin of safety to $5.10 and $15. $8.73. <clears throat> $8.23 to $10.20. You look at this and you're like, absolute buy. See, you were wrong. Again, fundamentals drive my decisions. Not this, right? Not this. If the fundamentals make sense, then, then I move on to see if like, okay, are they a good price right now? If they're not, then I wait. And if they are, then I buy, right? The fundamentals aren't there. <laughs> the fundamentals aren't there. So it is what it is. This is just my two cents, guys. Obviously, not financial advice. Every investment is the present value of all future cash flow. So if you guys like this kind of content, um, you know, all we ask is like, subscribe, comment. Even if you don't like my opinion on this company, you know, so be it. It is what it is. Guys, at the end of the day, all we're really asking for is just support to grow the channel. Thank you so much for everybody who has. Also, remember that if we can get to 3,000 subs by September 3rd, Mike will start doing face cam too. So make sure you spread the word, uh, spread the channel around. That is the best way that you guys can help us grow. You guys can send us tips if you would like. But, you know, we're not really, we, we really just, just want to grow the channel, obviously. We really do. Um, maybe in the future, we'll ask for, like, more donations and like, and, like, memberships and that kind of stuff. But for now, just help us grow the channel. That, that really is all we're asking for. And all of these calculators are available for free because I want everybody to make your own financial decisions for yourselves. I don't like this company. But I can't tell you what to do with your money. So at the end of the day, guys, you know, make that decision for yourselves. And when it comes to the option chains, unfortunately, uh, I can't really take a look at right now because market market just opened. It's 9.33 and th th this hasn't been updated yet. But you can see that there really isn't a lot of strikes here at all. And if, I'm, and if, and if I had to guess, guys, it probably won't be any good premiums at all. And by the way, I'm looking at the July 21st one. So, yeah, it is what it is. Nonetheless, though. Market is now opened, and let's see how the day goes about. Thank you so much for the recommendation on this company, and we'll see how this day ends up being, guys. By the time you guys see this video, I'll probably be a little bit late on this video. I probably won't put it out at 4 o'clock, obviously, when you see this. But um, understand that the Supreme Court decision is going to be massive. So that pretty much does it. Y'all can follow us on the new tech sites, as I said. Link is in the description below. So with that said, peace out, and we'll see you all next time.